Hello, welcome to this series on the derivative formulas. In the previous series, we saw the introduction to the derivative and we calculated the derivative from the definition, from the limit definition. Um, and in this series, we wanna be able to shortcut that process. My name is Nakai Rimmer. I'm happy to help you through this journey. Um, let's get started. So first up, we wanna be able to not have to go through all the work of using the limit definition. Okay, so let's lay down some ground rules. Say we have two functions, f of x and g of x, and they're differentiable. Okay, and let k be some constant. All right, the following rules apply. Let's say we have a constant function. I want to calculate the derivative of such a function. Okay, if it helps, look at the graph. Okay, and what is the derivative? The derivative is the slope of the tangent line. But when you have a line, the slope of the line actually matches the slope of the tangent line. They are the same. So the, what is the slope of a horizontal line like this? It's going to be zero. The derivative of any constant is zero. All right, great. Next up, a linear function. That's not... <laughs> One of those guys, horizontal. So just in general, y equals mx plus b, we have a line. Once again, the tangent line and the actual line coincide. The slope of the tangent line matches the slope of the line. Well, the line slope is m. Therefore, if you have a line, y equals mx plus b, its derivative is m. We're doing great. We're doing great. Okay, next up. What if you have a function f of x? and it's multiplied by a constant k. We want to take its derivative. The constant multiple rule says basically, just keep that constant and focus on the derivative of the function. y prime is equal to k times f prime. Constants, they get carried down. All right, great. Next up, this might be the most you know useful one at first, the power rule. It's built for polynomial-like functions or any kind of rational, you know, x raised to a, to a real number. And, um, what we can do is uh, employ the rule which says the following. You should then uh, take the derivative by bringing the multiply the exponent up um, down in front as a multiplier and then taking x to the one less power. So n times x to the n minus one, that's the power rule. We'll be using this on nice simple polynomials. Y equals x to the fourth. Its derivative can be found with this formula using the power rule that we bring down the four, we take it to the three. And just like that, we have it. Not to worry about the definition of the derivative anymore. And we can just get the answers right away. There was this, this question in the last video that we spent uh, 15 minutes on or 10. It wasn't fully, 15, the video was 15 minutes or about 12 minutes. But uh, good, a good amount of it was spent on trying to figure out through the definition what the derivative of this guy was. 1 over root x. We can treat it as with the power rule. Bring that root x up as a negative 1 half power. And employ the power rule on it. There's no, no restrictions on it other than the fact that it just needs to be a real number. Okay, Rational, irrational, doesn't matter. Uh, positive, negative, doesn't matter. As long as it's a real number. So, bring down the negative half, take it to the negative three halves. We can simplify that by putting it back on the denominator with the three halves being po uh, positive. And that's what we actually calculated after about eight, 10 minutes of, of grinding out the limit as h goes to zero formula. So this is gonna save us a lot of time, these derivative formulas. All right, okay, great. Well. Next up then, we want to say, if I have two functions that are added together and they're both differentiable, then the, the derivative of the sum is the sum of the derivatives. Same thing for difference. If I have two functions subtracted, the derivative of the difference is the difference of the derivatives. And you get on a roll here. You say, okay, I'm doing operations between two functions. And you're thinking, all right, what's up next? Multiplication. And you try to do the same thing. Why not? The derivative of the product should be the product of the derivatives, but we find out that it's not. A quick example using the difference and uh, difference rule here and the, and the power rule. Um, so now we can add together functions and be able to take the derivative of each one individually. And so 
Um, if your function is 4x minus 7x squared, then the 4x part has a derivative of 4. It's like the y equals mx plus b. And then the minus 7x squared part is both a constant and a power rule. It's kind of like all the rules together from the last slide. This guy's derivative would be 4. We'd carry down the minus we carry down the minus 7, bring the 2 down, and take it to the 1. And the derivative then can be simplified to be 4 minus 14x. Okay, using the difference rule together with the power rule, the constant rule, the derivative of a line, all that together, we have it. Okay, so I'm back to this product rule. You would think, hey, why can't I just do the same thing I've been doing? Derivative of the product should be the product of the derivatives. It's not the case. Okay, it doesn't work that way for the product and for the quotient. So what is it? Well, the derivative of the product is found by... Yes, taking the derivative of each one, but not at the same time, not simultaneous like this and multiplying them. It's found by taking the derivative of one and multiplying it by the other. Putting a plus sign and doing the reverse. Take the derivative of the one you didn't use at first times the other. That's it. I like to call them first and second, so I got the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. Little prime symbols for derivatives. Let's see this in action. We have this, these two functions. They're multiplied by each other. Um, f of x is built by the product of root x and some generic g of x function. We're saying these guys are continuous. And we have the fact that uh, we have some information about g. We don't know what g is. But we know that when we plug a 4 into it, we get an 8. When we plug a 4 into its derivative, we get a 7. Our job, find the derivative of f. Evaluate it at 4. Okay. And so f is the product of these two functions. So we're going to execute the product rule. Take the derivative of root x, which is 1 half x to the negative 1 half. Multiply it by g of x. That is half of the product rule. Derivative of the first times the second. Put a plus sign and flip that around. Leave the first alone and multiply by, symbolically here, the derivative of the second is g prime. You've executed the product rule. And we're asked to plug a 4 in every place we see an x. You can simplify. See, um, having, a, having a rational, um, having a negative exponent or the radical or the, you know, the radicals written as fractional exponents, those guys are great for taking the derivative. When it's come time to evaluate or to do some algebra with it, it's good to have it back in a radical format. So, and if it's in the bottom with a negative, you know, if, it's, if it has a negative exponent, you just put it in the opposite side. So I'm going to put it in the bottom, 1 over 2 root x times g of x, and that's multiply by root x times g prime of x. And now I'm going to plug my 4 in. But the root of 4 is just a 2. So we're going to have 1 over 2 times 2, multiplied by g of 4, which we know to be 8, and then plus the root of 4, which is 2, multiplied by g prime of 4, which we know to be 7. That's it. 2 plus 14. The answer is 16. Okay, so that's the sum rule, the difference rule, the product rule, you know what's next, the quotient rule. All right, and so I have two functions, one divided by the other, and make sure that the g of x doesn't, you know, vanish, doesn't go to zero. Create this new function, and we want to take the derivative of this function. It's not the same as the difference in the sum. The derivative of the quotient is not the quotient of the derivatives. Don't do it. It doesn't work out that way. Okay, and similar to the product rule, we have this quotient rule where we take the uh, take them one at a time, but in between we have a minus, and in the denominator we have the original denominator squared. Okay, and so there's a memory tool for this one too. Um, top and bottom, I guess, you know, numerator and denominator, however you want to say it. So it's the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, all divided by the bottom squared. Okay, you can't get that wrong. Because a minus b is not the same as b minus a. Okay. It worked for, um, you know, it doesn't matter the order for the product rule, but it's going to matter the order for the quotient rule. Okay. So let's see it in action. We have this uh, quotient of two functions. One's linear, one's quadratic. And we're trying to find the derivative at 1. So we're going to execute the quotient rule. Square the bottom. That's the easiest part. Let's do that first. Just represent it. Denominator squared. The original denominator squared. Um, bring that bottom up to the top, untouched. Not the square part, but the original denominator, the original um, 
uh, denominator. And then the derivative of the numerator, it's, it's a line, right? mx plus b, its derivative is the m. So three. So three times the denominator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator. The derivative of the denominator, x squared plus one, is two x. You did it. You're done. I mean, we can multiply it and try to, you know, simplify it, but if ever you're asked to plug a number in, it's best you plug it in right away. It's my advice. You don't have to take it. All right. But if you do, it's really nice. So you have three times two minus four times two. It's all over two squared. Six minus eight over four. Final answer is that we get a negative two in the numerator, four in the denominator, we get a negative one half. Okay. So that's the beginning part. Uh, we're going to look at some, some other kinds of questions, but we have at least the groundwork. We have some nice rules laid out. Um, more rules are to come, um, but uh, these are the, the basic rules. Let's go ahead and end this video now. It's getting a little bit long. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe and comment down below. Reach out to me if you have any questions. I'm happy to help you um, through, this, through this journey. And so we are looking at derivative formulas, ways to shortcut the definition. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.